Hello, good morning. I'm uh, first of all, thanks to our uh, hosts and thanks for inviting me. I'm very excited to be here and to uh, learn from this uh, great grouping across different uh, disciplines and, and uh, areas uh, about universities and patent law. Uh, I definitely have thoughts and I look forward to the discussion on uh, whether it be uh, biotechnology patents and the, uh, their, their abstractness and uh, their um, patentability even after Myriad and the Mayo two-step and whatnot. But um, for my talk, for my formal remarks, I thought I would do something since we're going to hear from uh, um, people at MIT and who've been at Stanford. I thought I would talk about universities uh, that are not at kind of the MITs or Stanfords and what they are doing with patents. So I thought I'd talk about what Boston College, where I work, uh, what its approach is with technology licensing and so forth. Um, so importantly, one of the things that makes Boston College very different than Harvard or Stanford, or MIT or others, is we have no medical school and we have no engineering department. So we're much more of a liberal arts uh, university. And what do patents look like to the liberal arts university? We do have uh, you know, uh, good departments in chemistry and, and biology and computer science. But still, not um, just a very different focus, I would say, than some of these other places. So BC has four main goals when it comes to thinking about uh, technology transfer, thinking about innovation and, and patentable innovation. The first goal is just to push technology out into the world, push, push out what we're doing and share it with the world. Um, sometimes that means monetizing it, and sometimes that's very exciting, and you know, the uh, universities. Uh, don't tend to look askance at bringing in money. Other times it's though uh, free or reduced price depending on how it fits with the mission and I'll give an example of that in a bit. The second goal is to encourage innovation and entrepreneurship amongst our students and our faculty. Um, Boston College does have a, a quite well uh, regarded undergraduate business school and a good uh, graduate business school, but the undergraduate business school is particularly well regarded. And so there's a sense of wanting to encourage that kind of innovation and entrepreneurialism amongst our students. And so when policy setting, when, when coming at the kind of duties of especially the technology transfer office, we keep that in mind. The third closely related is an educational goal. And I'll talk about how there's some educational tie in. Uh, and fourth, and, and hopefully much more minor, but I think something worth talking about is kind of keeping stakeholders and especially uh, important uh, faculty members, uh, PIs, happy and how sometimes that, ha that comes into play in the office. So how does Boston College accomplish these four goals? Um, well, when it comes to pushing technology out into the world, that's often but not always done through patents, but often is, is done through at least looking at patents. Uh, so I'll talk first about patenting and licensing. The, the, the approach that Boston College takes, and, and I should say something about our technology licensing office, so, or we call it the tech transfer office. Uh, until five years ago, this was a cost center at Boston College. For the last five years, it's been modestly profitable uh, since we, we hired uh, a director who was a patent agent for 10 years and can do a lot of our patent work, at least provisionals in-house. And he now has a staff of two full-time people, another of whom is a patent agent and one is a PhD. So Jason Wynn is in charge of our office there. And he's been very energetic uh, about pushing uh, uh, our technology out there. And the way that's generally done is when an inventor comes and looks like there's something uh, with promising potential, filing a provisional patent, and then going and trying to find out if someone will, is willing to license it. And then if someone is, then uh, letting, effectively letting the licensee pay for the patent prosecution is, is kind of a, the, the ideal, I think, approach there. there. In some cases, of course, they'll uh, patent on their own and, uh, and license, but that's a big cost for a, a relatively small office like we have at BC. Uh, and so there's really a focus on licensing early, uh, assessing whether there's interest early, and focusing there, and for the most part, not always, but for the most part, if there's not, uh, at that point, uh, potentially letting, uh, you know, not, not following up on uh, the rest of the patent filing. Um, sometimes we'll then, um, uh, if the inventor's still interested in it, uh, BC will, will grant all of the rights, assign all of the rights then to the individual inventor and let her or him do you know do do as she will with it and this with students as well 
everybody at BC signs, well, almost everybody at BC signs an agreement saying that the university has the rights to their inventions. So faculty, grad students, et cetera. Uh, the exception is that our undergraduate students do not in anything they invent, even using university resources are considered theirs. Uh, sometimes they'll we'll do deals uh, in which they'll, they'll bring on some more university resources and that can change. But that leads into the second way that BC tries to uh, push out technology, and that's to spin it off into startups. So as part of the entrepreneurial focus, there's an interest in uh, uh, spinning some of this out uh, into startups, uh, either at the provisional level or if the patent prosecution is ongoing. Uh, whether that be faculty members, faculty and students, graduate students, uh, sometimes undergraduate students uh, on their own. So, and, and there's an interest in the office to bringing together people who can benefit each other. So bringing together people within the university community who might want to be involved in the startup that's spun, spun off. I already mentioned giving the rights to the uh, uh, PI and, and that sort of thing. So there's two types of kind of licensing uh, that BC does. One is just trying to monetize the invention, thinking it's uh, going to be useful to the market. Generally with an exclusive license, you know, just go ahead and let someone have it and then it's going to be their problem and it's kind of off of, the, the managing of it is, is uh, out of the technology transfer office. The other is uh, public good. So um, a, a team of computer scientists at Boston College came up with a, an invention that's now been called the Eagle Eye. Uh, and what this does is by putting electrodes a, a, around the eye of someone who's paralyzed, it can track eye movements so that when people look at a screen, it can effectively make their eye movements, the, the mouse and the clicking. You, you may have even seen this reported in the news. It's gotten some pretty good news coverage. And so uh, BC spun that off, or not, didn't spin it off, but licensed it to a nonprofit who agreed uh, to make the technology available as part of its nonprofit mission. Uh, and it wasn't for zero fee, but it was a very, very low fee to try to just kind of do public good through that. This is a, a technology that might be commercializable uh, on its own, but in certain cases, BC sees its mission, uh, its social justice mission, as, as being that it should just spin this sort of stuff out. That also um, leads me to another point, which I think is important, and that's the importance of culture at universities. So overall, BC's goal is for the tech transfer office to make some money, but to make some money so it's not a big cost center in pushing our innovations out into the world. If individual inventors and groups uh, make some money off of that as well, that's to the good. You know, it's motivation. BC's standard deal is that the inventor gets a third and BC takes the other two thirds, a third for the department, a third for the university. So that's the goal. Now, I don't think anyone would be unhappy if the billion dollar invention comes along uh, and, 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 and things transform, but that's really not what we're uh, looking for or, or, or see likely right now. So I think the importance of situation, context, and culture is worth thinking about. Um, BC has been approached by a number of patent aggregators and has always said no because, because of a cultural uh, and values kind of idea of uh, not wanting to be involved in that sort of monetizing. Generally after initial licensing or initial attempt to, to commercialize the invention, um, that's about it as far as what BC does. There are some example or, or exceptions. Uh, so when a startup fails, sometimes the license deal will then make the tech come back to BC. At that point, try to relicense it. So in at least uh, one or two occasions when that's happened, uh, then doing just a search has, has revealed people who seem to be practicing the patent and then there's been some letter writing and engaging with uh, licensing attempts uh, with those people. But of course, because litigation is so expensive and most a lot, a lot of the innovation coming out of BC is not going to be the huge uh, upside, uh, the, the attempt at BC is really to, I, sh I shouldn't say this too loudly, right, but, but to avoid litigation, right? If I say we'll never litigate, then that just destroyed our bargaining position, but, but there it is. And I should also, of course, uh, say that I'm, I'm in the law school and I'm talking with people and we're involved, but I don't speak for, of, of course, for the university as policy. The last thing I'll say, because I'm all, uh, pretty much out of time, is uh, we have the educational goals. So we're uh, trying to work between the law school, the business school, and our tech transfers uh, um, office to 
uh, have students involved in all of those sort of things. Uh, so whether it be entrepreneurship and business model competitions where we actually bring in the tech transfer office to help give advice and whatnot to the business school students, to the law students. We're trying to innovate and integrate much more. Uh, we've got a new program on innovation entrepreneurship at the law school, and we're trying to tie that in with what the B school already has and the tech tra transfer office. So that's, that's one uh, kind of view of how that works at a school like BC. So I look forward to the rest of the discussion. Thanks.